And uh, maybe we'll debunk the myth of how aggressive black mongoose are. Yes, let's debunk some venomous snake myths. So today will be a little bit of a different video and I'm going to take it back to two years ago in 2018, exactly two years ago to this day was the hardest day of my life and a heart de breaking day. So I just want to tell the story behind it and kind of share what was going through my mind in the moment of losing one of my closest friends to something that I literally do every single day and how it has affected me personally two years later and what has changed since then and I'll go through like what exactly happened what my feelings were like and what was running through my head when I heard the news and yeah so this is the story of Ryan Vincent Subrian and how the world lost a legend on the 29th of September 2018 and where it all started we we'll do some black mambas some gaboons maybe Silent. a few cobras uh... Capoons for sure. <laughs> I love this. Uh, put you a black mamba behind you and see how quick you run. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> okay, so I feel you need a bit of a backstory on Ryan before you can fully understand what happened and how it happened exactly. So Ryan worked with venomous snakes for a living. It was his passion. It was his hobby. It was his love. That's that's what he loved doing. Everything about it. That was his thing to do. So it was his job as well as his hobby at the same time and in that he would extract venom from a bunch of different venomous snakes here in South Africa to create our polyvalent and monovalent anti-venom to essentially save lives and limbs. He was in the venom production field so he would look after the venomous snakes, milk them, so extract the venom from these snakes so that venom can be used into producing life-saving anti-venom. So that is what Ryan did for a living. And when he would come home from that, he would spend countless hours in the snake room because it was such a huge passion in his heart that he would spend every waking minute with these animals. So at work, he would work with these creatures and then at home he had a bunch of amazing animals at his facility too that he would look after and care for and just admire for hours on end in the snake room. So on the 26th of September 2018 he, he was 26 years old at the time, the day before his 27th birthday, which happened to be on the 27th of September. He was busy extracting venom from a bunch of different black mambas, Dendroaspis polylepis, um, known as one of the most feared snakes in Africa, if not one of the most feared snakes in the world. And in doing this, one of the fangs caught on his finger and within a few moments he went into anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is basically him having an allergic reaction to the snake's venom because of his prior exposure to all the venom and working with it constantly he built up an allergy with that so within moments he was he went into anaphylaxis and was rushed off to hospital. Oh, 
so that happened on the 26th of September and he was in a coma from then over his 27th birthday he was in a coma I wished him happy birthday because at the time I had not received any news of his envenomation and that so on his birthday in fact I, I messaged him saying hey bro I was just wishing him happy birthday and he wasn't responding which was weird because we chat all the time and I was like what's going on this dude never never like misses out on my messages and it was like two hours afterwards or whatever that I heard uh, Ryan is currently in a coma fighting for his life after being envenomated by a black mamba while doing a venom extraction. Hearing this a day later was absolutely crushing. Hearing the news was like devastating to me. I was absolutely, yeah, I was, I felt broken at the time, but also very hopeful. I was so full of hope because Ryan was super strong and I had like all the confidence that he would pull through it. A bunch of us did, all of the friends that I chatted to we were pretty confident he was going to pull through and that and we got some positive news that okay it seems like he's doing better. He was in a coma for quite a few days from the 26th to the 27th, 28th and yeah i remember exactly what was happening because i was i was super keen he was the kind of guy that would have like joked around and teased saying oh bro why are you worry why did you worry so much f about me and saying yeah I, i'm never gonna die he was that kind of guy saying like yeah he he just loved life so much so I never thought that this could or would ever happen. Oh, man. I, I literally thought we would have con a conversation afterwards of him saying like all the crazy experiences he had while he was in a coma. Did he see everyone who was visiting him or could he hear all his buddies in the room when and family when he was in the coma what was going on i thought we'd have an excellent chat like afterwards saying hey man this was like a crazy experience or whatever but i i really thought that we were gonna have a chat afterwards about what exactly happened how it happened and what it was like and what the feeling was like what he went through in his mind at the time and I was really looking forward to that because we kept getting pos positive news back <sighs> and then on that the 29th of September I got I received news and I received news that they had switched him off life support because he was in a coma he was on life support and and I remember exactly what I was doing at the time what I was wearing where I was it's like ingrained in the back of my memory that that feeling of your heart literally stopping of your throat closing up and time just passed like I I don't remember much of what happened I wasn't able to sleep time literally just flew by I felt so numb yet so broken and uh, it's it's not something one ever wants to go through losing a friend think like especially when he's so young and you think you've got like the rest of your life to be buddies and mates and friends forever whatever and then you get the news at 
27, he passes his way. Wow, that must be beautiful. It is, it is. I mean, uh, you did see it the last time we were yeah, here. I did, but, but uh, yeah, we, it no, he so hasn't beautiful. seen it. He hasn't seen it. No, yet. not at all. I have. Oh, yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and when I got the message, it was like, I wasn't able to comprehend it. I was like, no, this can't be true. That's not. No, this must be some kind of sick joke. I literally. It's not something I could like comprehend and take down that. Oh, one of your closest friends is now gone and you'll never be able to spend time with him again. I don't know what I'm doing. I know Ryan knows. I, I don't know either. I thought you were teaching me. Oh, is that how it works? Yes, that's No, I, I'm pretty sure you were supposed to be teaching me like so what a mentor like, should be. So this is like the blind leading the blind? I have no idea what that is. Oh <laughs> this is bad. This was a male, eh? Yes, this was a male. I mean, the last conversation I had with him was on the 25th and he was asking about my health, how how I'm doing. And then on the, the Saturday when I heard the news in the morning, I got the message. I was actually busy, busy making pancakes that are like gluten free or whatever that I could have. And I get that message and everything just stops. Ryan leaving us was so unexpected. I mean, the moment, like, I remember the last time I saw him, I would have never thought that that would be my last time with him. The last time I got to spend with him. He loved teasing me and joking around with me about things, teasing me about new snakes he got and And now that's never going to happen again. It sucks. It really, really sucks. And now it's been two years without him. And it's kind of weird. I mean, I owe a lot to Ryan because, I mean, all the friendships I've made from him have helped me get to where I am today. I never expected to have a reptile room and start a facility like this and then even like be able to start working towards the future reptile preservation institute he gave me a hope in a lot of those ways where he would chat about saying bryce let's get you some of these snakes and you can really work with them and and you'll love it he, he tried to help me in every way to help uh, build like the Reptile Preservation Institute and it's really accelerated at a fast rate and that's a lot of it's to do with what I learned from him and the the connections and friendships I made because of Ryan. Ryan gave everything plus his life to these animals so he wouldn't want you to hate them or go out and kill snakes because oh they took someone's life no he would actually want you to he would want you to love these animals so much one of the biggest things he taught me was when handling these snakes do it in such a way you handling them with so much care and so much love that they can actually feel that and then they won't it'll be safer for you too and safer for them because treat them like little babies handle them with so much care and so much love and just he wouldn't want you to think snakes are bad or anything like that he would he would still to this day try and convince you how beautiful and how amazing these animals are with every breath in him you have to say about that right 100 percent. i mean i keep a lot of uh, mambas myself and you know, I work with them on a daily basis and you know, um, I've never come across an aggressive mamba but more a defensive mamba. Given sure. the option of uh, escaping or, or, or defending itself, it's, it's going to try and run yeah. away. He, he just loved them so much. I mean, to work with it on a professional level and 
and then go home and work with these animals even more. That's what his life consisted of, was working with these incredible animals and the love he had for them was, it was insane. It's been two years without you, bro. I miss you so much.